join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. Hello, you are again with me, Archie Nesbitt. And you will not be sorry, because in today's episode of The Ultimate Shot, together with you, we will embark on an extremely hard enterprise. Every hunter dreams of a hunt like this, but few are the chosen ones who manage to receive a license for it. Our hunting ticket for a catamaran ram in Alberta is issued by name, and in all ways and means, it is a hunt of a lifetime. Because of Alberta's strict rules for the hunting of this exceptionally beautiful and noble animal, the sheep herds maintain a stable population in the region and are a feedstock for places like Montana and Nevada. The terrain inhabited by the sheep with twisted horns is a rugged region, a portion of the Canadian Rocky Mountains that stretches along much of the western border of Alberta. It is characterized by forests of coniferous trees such as spruce, fir, and pine. At higher elevations, permanent snow fields and glaciers are scattered among rocky ledges, scree slopes, and alpine meadows. After the difficult climbing of the steep slope of the mountain covered with rock fragments which can slip at any time, leaving you to the mercy of gravity and the free fall over the sharp rocky peaks to the immovable rocks below, we saw the thick massive horns of a ram. The trophy was very good, but I had come for the biggest one, and I would not quit my desire even if I had to climb a hundred mountains like this. At this moment, my P.H. Jonas realized that I would not be stopped by anything until I found the biggest ram dwelling in this territory for which we had a license. So he stopped for a rest and to spot sheep on the icebound ground. Climbing down the rocky slope was no less harder and no less dangerous than the climb up. Only the high quality boots and my experience in climbing were the reason that I made these climbs without any injury and sprains in this rough terrain. The hunting went on with just another climb to the top, just me and my bow and Sheldon and his camera. The deep snow on the skirts of the mountain slope added to the hardship of the situation. November 14th, and we're sitting in our almost igloo here in the snowdrift. <laughs> we get up this morning and uh, early enough and came up and found a good drift and a good level spot in front of it. Built our wall. We're uh, surrounded by active sheep trails and uh, the rut's on. We haven't seen any breeding activity, but the rams are all chasing the ewes. Someone said the big rams aren't here yet. Well, we'll see. We've seen some great rams, I don't know how many. Um, several over 190. It's the second day we've been up here on this mountain. And uh, we're all set. The wind isn't bad, the sun's shining. Snow in the forecast, looks like snow to the north. So now it's a waiting game. And it's really a game of holding out. We can kill any sheep we want uh, probably today, but we want a big one, and right now there aren't any in our sights. We know there's some really good ones below us. They have to come back up, and we think they will, and we think they'll come right up these trails here, so. 14th today, we got exactly 31 days.
The weather was breaking, and after the abundant snowfall, during the next days we were forced to change our location and tactics. We chose cover near some trees close to the peak of the mountain top and put Jonas's decoys well above us, skillfully made in the shape and image of real female sheep. Due to the strenuously hard conditions for hunting, we invited two hunters to share our shelter on the top of the mountain slope. Well, we, we experienced uh, almost the ultimate shot today. Uh, we saw a, a really uh, great guy get his first sheep here and uh, we had a great time. And we really made it possible for another hunter to be successful, which is a very warming thing for us. Um, make sure you help your fellow hunter. You know, if you've got a great deer, it's always great to see your kid or somebody's kid or some guy who doesn't have a great buck get one too. Uh, you're part of it. It's a great experience. I, uh, I think it's one of the greatest days I've had this year of hunting. Anyway, stay tuned. It's our turn and uh, maybe we'll get that ultimate shot on a real buster because they're here and we're here and we got lots of time. Only a really lucky guy could get such a chance. In the last day of his hunt, on his way home, he had changed his mind and accepted our invitation. Stopped for a moment, had a rest, and we turned to be his providence because the ram that came had exceptional trophy qualities. Every other guy in our place would have been elated to shoot this ram, but we assigned our right to this deserving hunter and his partner. I do not know whether a force exists which moves human decision and fate, but in our case, it was exactly so, because something exceptional was ahead for us. Minus 25 this morning. Cleared off. It's calm, but it's mighty cold. A lot of the sheep are still here and lots of tracks have been rutting around all day yesterday. So hopefully they're moving today. Hopefully it warms up a little. One thing, we could have lots of sun, which should help. We'll see. And we're just about at the top of the peak here in the mountains west of Cataman, Alberta. Below us is the old Luscar mine that's been reclaimed and is probably the premier sheep habitat in North America. There are a couple thousand bighorn sheep here and countless herds of elk. We've seen a lot of mule deer. We've even seen whitetail bucks closer to town. We're on a special permit to hunt bighorn sheep. We got another three weeks. We've had countless, very close opportunities with great bighorn sheep, as you'll see on our footage. We're filming bighorn sheep hunting, and we're still hoping to get a colossal ram, and we've seen three. It's tough, it's cold, there's lots of sheep here. We've had lots of opportunities. We're hoping for the ultimate shot. We've got our decoy set up above us here on skyline, in two directions skyline, because there's sheep below us, there's sheep way out. And all of a sudden, just over the hill, a bunch of ewes appeared. We think there's a ram with them, we just don't know how big he is. But the ewes are coming, and they're coming to the decoys, just like yesterday. The male came to the decoys yesterday for the other hunter. So if there's a big ram and these females go by us and get to the decoys, we've got a chance.
got man-made decoys, we got live decoys, we just need a ram. Just incredible. We know decoys work for antelope, everybody does. Decoys work for elk, they work for deer, and boy, they sure work for sheep. <laughs> but we just need a trophy sheep, not the, not the ewes and lambs. Sheep are famous for their incredible eyesight, which helps them to see the approaching predators for miles away. Exactly this quality of theirs, we turned into our advantage, putting the decoys on the top of the mountains, where their distinctive silhouettes were seen from enormous distance on the background of the blue sky. Soon the females were followed by a mature male specimen. The animal's keen sense of smell, because of the wind direction, was not in their favor, and they felt our presence only when they reached some 10 to 15 yards from us. Due to Alberta's sophisticated security measures and the serious punishment for the hunters who tried to hunt the rams without the respective license, the animals, having very limited hunting pressure, were prone to accept us as harmless wildlife lovers after they, one after another, had fallen into a dangerous proximity of the two-legged creatures. Well, that's Randy, long on the left side, a little shorter on the right side. Massive, massive, heavy, wide. So, you know, we've been here more than a week. We've battled this weather and uh, had all these close encounters. Now it's up to Randy. <laughs> Randy comes up here, follows all those ewes, comes up to check out these decoys. Um, may see that ultimate shot, so let's see what happens. That's Randy, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. In the cold air, the smoke from the fire was going up impetuously, depriving the sheep of any opportunity to smell us. Only our movements would scare them. The stock and the exceptional opportunities for incredible trophies which were coming closer were making me forget about the freezing temperatures. Well, today that's already four rams that went by at under 20 yards. Uh, one might not have been sure were and uh, you know one was in that 170 plus range but uh, we're going for broke so uh, it's sure exciting it's unbelievable the interaction with them it's unbelievable the sheep we've seen really close but uh, you know there's still lots of big rams and eventually one of them's going to come by and we're going to get a shot, so stay tuned. I miss the alien. Jonah said, don't kill the alien. And I missed him. So I guess it wasn't meant to be. Randy's coming. Behind me 
is a tremendous catamaran ram, a real old buster, heavily broomed, just a gorgeous ram. We call him the alien. His right horn is very tight to the side of his head and his neck and it's brushing his hide and his hair. The left horn is further out, both beautiful broomed, massive broomed horns. It's a great old ram, just a tremendous, tremendous ram for any bighorn sheep hunter. We're passing the alien today. We're looking at three or four bigger rams in this area. But the alien is a super ram. We filmed him a couple of times. We could have taken him today, but we'll leave him for another lucky hunter. He is pretty old. He might be like a lot of the rams and die here on the old mine site or off here in the canyons. But uh, you just see some good footage here now of a tremendous ram. Tremendous Cadman Alberta ram. And we're here sheep hunting 22nd of November, minus 30. Really, really tough conditions, but uh, we're seeing the rams, they're moving, the rut's on. The Dubes ram, Art Dubes ram, and the Randy ram, Randy Vivala. So stay tuned for the ultimate shot. Randy or Dubes. See what happens. In a situation like ours, freezing in the icy niche under the peak for many days now, every moment and every chance to relieve the monotony was welcome. The coldness can squeeze out your powers imperceptibly. Even the hardest man can lose the battle with nature in the end, and without realizing it, your muscles simply give up at the sublime moment, and you just cannot do anything against it. 80 pounds in this uh, minus 30 weather, it just seems like that bore. Maybe it's me getting weak. Time was flying, and our days here were numbered. Sheldon and his camera were going home. We had to try something different. Well, we got two big rams up here somewhere. You guys have seen, so we probably want to cut down. Get him. That's the ultimate shot, the ultimate sheep hunt. I'm lucky to have great family, great friends, great organizations like Safari Club, Grand Slam Lois, Fanaz. I'm a life member of all three. You should be too. I'm on top of the world here, Cadman, Alberta, a mile outside the mine. We've had a tough hunt, tough conditions. Randy Bavella said it's going to be windy, son of a gun. Might be too windy. I'm sitting here on top of the world and I'm still alive and I'm still hunting. I've got a tremendous ram here below. We think it's the second biggest one of all the ones we've seen. It wasn't the biggest one and you know, sometimes you just can't do it. I don't know what this ram looks like except that he's big and he's lying there and I don't want to disturb him. There's an enormous blood trail across to where he is. I'm going to wait for my two guides, Jonas and Eddie, to show up, and then we're going to go down there together. That's the way it should be. It's our hunt. It's a team effort. It's not my hunt. But it's a bear and trophy ridge hunt. And my true ball release.
Hey! Hey! We're right here! We got a dead ram! We shot her ram. What did you do that for, you fuckers? You bastards! Uh, they shot several times. The other ram, I think they hit uh, Alien 2. And I don't, he looked like he was dead, but he might not have been. And after the shooting, he rolled over. They really fired a lot of shells. If it's got a bullet in it, it's not a bow kill, so I guess it's not mine. There's two happy hunters with the ram that has two arrows in it. I, uh, second arrow, he was moving and I, I led him and I shouldn't have. Uh, first arrow, I shot from below and up and I must have shot just a little low. I think the arrow's in him, actually. Just must have missed the heart. There's a sidewalk of blood here going back and he was lying there and we thought we were just going to let him, we were just going to let him die and expire and they could see him on skyline and fill him full of lead. Uh, he didn't move an inch, he just rolled over. I think maybe the force of the bullets knocked him over. I think he was already dead, but he's got bullets in him. And I can't claim a bow kill if it's got any kind of bullets in it. Uh, do I argue with these guys? No. Uh, that's their luck and my bad luck. So we're at Cataman <laughs> and we're here hunting. We're still hunting and uh, we're still looking for the ultimate shot.